Yeah, there's the butt. Yeah, I think this is a Khajiit. And you know what else is clever? If this is a Khajiit that's been hung up and everything by this, like, <laughs> you know, I presume racist gang, right? But regardless, clever way for them to have the skeleton of a, K of a Khajiit, but not have to deal with a Khajiiti skeleton with its wild fucking, like, spring into action legs. Just have, just have everything from the butt down fall off the skeleton. When we had last left the Nerevarine, an adventure in seek, in, in search of a bunch of bandits run amok. Yes, the Viper Gang had spun out of control with them finding a secret entrance to a secret den of iniquity. Yes, skeletons were all around some blue glow rock that was super valuable. But even deeper still was a great nest of demons and vampires. Five million vampires resided within the ruins of Ramayayan, and it was there that they slew all of them, for now at least, maybe there were more. And also, there were amazing treasures, like a really cool hammer, and an axe that defied all expectations for axes. <laughs> now, now it was time to continue delving deep into what remained of the... Vampire Zone. This is the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. Tamriel rebuilt. This is Morrowind Mondays. Welcome back. <laughs> Asshole. Sorry. I, sometimes I can't help it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Fucking A. All right. Sometimes it, it just it just rolls off the tongue as it were. You know. There we are. Let's do a repair. Oh. There we are. Let's get some more. Repair unit. Do I have tongs on me at present? I don't think so. Okay. There we are. We'll use one of these amazing Master Armorer's hammers. Alright, now also, in between videos, I put down a little marker. That way I don't forget where we dropped our stuff. Just in case. Because, I don't know if you've uh, watched any of these stupid videos I make, but, um... <laughs> Sometimes I'm a little forgetful. <laughs> right, sometimes sometimes I forget a thing or two. <laughs> Look, let's let's just be real. It's probably for the best that I make a some kind of note where I leave these things on the fucking ground, you know? Okay. Let's have a look over here. What's up with you? Boethia? Malakath? Lord Dagon? I don't think so. Definitely not Molag Bal, who you would think it would be. Hmm. Given all the vampire stuff. But right, you know? Hey, if I were a vampire, I would actually not be into Molag Bal at all. <laughs> you know, I, I actually wouldn't be <laughs> be into that. Some vampires might be, but I'm I'm I would be different. Okay. Orcish Claymore back here still. Oh, there's a little crate. Orc chest. Mmm, I love to get into an orc's chest. Well, have you, have you got 50 iron arrows? Look at this. It's got a little something something there. It looks like it has has a little, like, Skyrim lock pad on it. Or maybe that's an Oblivion looking one. No, Oblivion one would be a lot more brass looking, wouldn't it? Okay. Well, let's go past here. Good, how about... Oh, there's some stuff here, more Imperial junk. I think we checked all this, right? Check our map. Yeah, up this way we haven't searched. Down these corridors we have searched. So yeah, it's just this one area. Unless there's some weird secret area that we can fly up to, but I don't know about that. Okay. Oh, fuck. Hang on, let me quick save. Oh, shit. God, I hope I can kill you. Because that was a dangerous quick save we did. 
Oh god. Okay. Fuck off. God. Oh. Oh god no! Oh fuck. Oh shit shit shit. Okay, here goes again. So fucking anxious, dude. God. No. One more, and I'm done. Oh fuck. Okay. All right. Okay. Hang on. Can I get like a restore fatigue or something? Let's see. Fuck it. I'm. Well, no. We should wait for that one. That's a lot. Good. Now I'm gonna drink it. Fuck off. Come on. Come on, baby! Yes, man! Yes! Oh, eat shit, Grumga Gra Shugdub. What a fucking incredible name you have. Good thing you only had a silver spear. Okay. How does this common shirt look? It looks pretty cool. The little picture of it. Is it actually, though? Hmm. Let's see. Oh, I've already picked one up because I thought it looked so cool. Yeah, it's got like a little... What do you call this? Is this a doublet? I'm unfamiliar with like... Very old-timey clothing. Is this a doublet? It's like a vest or corset situation, but... I think this is a doublet. Right? It's alright. Okay. Oh god, where'd my wizardly robe go to? Put that back on. Which actually, this doesn't look all too dissimilar. I don't know. It, it looks incredibly dissimilar. <laughs> what am I fucking saying? Okay. I'll drop these on the floor then. Where'd my robe go? That ain't it. Where did my robe go? Robe. Nailed it, genius. Okay. Let's also first get Savior's Hide and then Robe. Cool. Okay. Now, let's continue searching down this way, huh? Get some heals going on. I think there was maybe just one down here. Yeah. This might be end of the line. Okay. Bunch of strength enhancing items. Take all that. Whoa. Crucifix and everything. All right, Orcish Helm, The Bone Song. We've read The Bone Song before. Metal Bucket. Broken Broadsword. Empty Ungorth Bottle. Huh, anything else good here? Potion of whatever the hell, Night Eye and Restore Speed. I'll take that just to... Oh my god, what the hell? Cure poison, resist common disease. Is this like an alchemy store? Okay, this, yeah. This is part of a vampire arc for sure. 
Somebody even wrote in saying as much that uh, there are vampire arcs in Tamriel Rebuilt. There's new vampiric houses and everything. Yeah, this is just straight up a vendor lord for him. Huh. Okay. Something for a future character run, right? Let's see over here. More bone mold stuff. Take the Mazda, take the grief. Emptied out coffin, a steel dagger inside. Okay. Sure. And we check these. Yep. Let's get on back to our pile of loot. And I think we are good to go, right? Let's see. You know, that goes back to the forge. And there's no other area we can go to here. Yep. That's it. Okay. At least I think so. Let me just poke my head in here real quick. Yeah, I think we full cleared it. Fair enough. Okay. And then... Let's take all these back. Right? Good. And then, let's get recall going. I could even just use this scroll. Maybe I should do that. up some inventory space. Okay. And should I just do an emergency dump right here in the ground? I think so. And then... Good. We'll throw these on the floor and we can sort through it at a later date. Ideally, at a point in time in between videos when the opportunity presents itself. Good. Pop that there. What else have we got? Orcish long spear. Yeah, the thrust on it is actually decent for, for going fast. Do I actually prefer that, though? Because it has slightly longer range. Yeah, it has about a 10% increase in range. Well, no. Maybe at 0.5%. Yeah, because it's 0.6 feet longer range. And significantly lower weight. I think I'd rather the higher range. That might be my favorite stat in that regard. We'll try it out. I'll leave the Daedric Spear there. Orcish items, they deal damage to, like, ghosts and stuff, right? I think so. The Holy Blade. Pop that right there. Anything else I've got that I need to dump? I could put Demand down. Okay. No shortage of books. Yeah, we definitely need to make a effort to read. Okay. Oh, and the Sickle. Okay. Should I keep the crossbow on me? I don't know. Maybe not. I don't have that many bolts, more arrows than anything. Okay, good. Oops. And then, let me rebind my spear weapon there. Good. Okay. Sure. Love it. And let's also do a quick repair. Cool. God, look at my stats. I'm all boozed up, baby. Okay. Now, let's head on out here, and we'll report back to the commission. Right? Over this way. Good. My jump is really debilitated here, yeah? I don't know. Okay. Sure. Gosh, my encumbrance didn't change all too fucking much at all, though. It's probably all this other sh all these fucking books I'm carrying around. 
<laughs> We're carrying around like a fucking public library. All right. And the scrolls don't help. Okay. We've also got a fair few number of potion. Oh, it's the spell stone. I forgot about the spell stone. That's really doing me in. Hold up. Let's go drop that off. Look, normally we try to do inventory management in between videos, but sometimes it just can't be helped. Okay. Orbloses, and I'm gonna put it right here. There we go. Anything else? Huh. I think it's... It's mostly gotta be the books, right? Oh, how about, yeah, this rare hammer, too. There we are. Sure. I still got that scrib pie for some quest. Okay. Good, good, good. Let's head on out over here. Good. Over this way. Oh. And over here. See, this is also the issue with OpenMW's nice inventory uh, search function is it just makes it a lot easier to carry around a bunch of little knickknacks and bullshit, right? Which, uh, really, I don't know, <laughs> really kowtows to my, my worst habits. <laughs> All right, down here. And, well, it's very green down here, I never noticed. The Kagudi Tusks. Okay. Let's do a quick save. Hello, Agronac Rodemog. Trusted. Of course. <sighs> I don't have like vampirism or something, do I? No, of course not. What is it, citizen? Let's see. Viper blades. I took care of them. You've cleared out the viper blades. Excellent. That'll help keep the trade caravans moving through those hills unmolested. Here's your pay. 600 gold, okay. Anything else about him? I'm already forgetting their fancy name, Dark Elf. I suggest you do the same. Okay, how about these Kagudi Tusks? They've been raiding travelers heading north out of Arvood, a caravan town south of Andothrin. It's rough country out there in the Ashlands, so we're certain they'll have to be based in some permanent shelter. A cave near the road, I expect. Okay, I'll take care of it. Good luck. I will mark our vood on your map. Maybe the people there will know more about the Kagudi Tusk's hideout. More about them? I'd ask around our vood if you have trouble finding them. I'll find them. Better start looking. Okay, okay, thanks. Let's we can't get mention the over. vampire situation, huh? Okay. Back on up here. Yeah, was it that way before, last time we were down there? That there was that, like, greenish tint to everything? I don't think so. Alright, over here. Should we pray at one of the shrines real quick? Top off the old, uh, Three Magicka situation? Maybe. Let's see. Good. Afflicted with a common disease, just in case we had some vampirism that I didn't catch. Alright. Yeah, you know, a little vampirism goes, uh, goes about right with a little House Telvani action, I feel. Okay, over here. Good. Hello! I would like to go to... Oh, dear. I think a Manus, right? To get to our Where would you like to go? Oh shit! Uh, go back to Andothrin. We make a special trip. Okay. To uh, how about Manon? All right. Why walk when you can ride? There we go, our Where Wonderful. would you like to go? Okay, let's ask around here again. Let's see. Who should we ask? I wonder. How about one of these guards out here? Hello. Under sun and sky, Outlander, we greet you warmly. Oh, I can't ask. Okay. 
Well, what do you know? How about you? Quickly, Outlander. I haven't much time. Greetings, Dark Elf. Seen a stray caravan gar guar? Bring it to me and I'll pay you, even though you are an Outlander. Do you know about the Kaguti tusks? Word around town is they're holed up in Renat, a cave northwest of here. Okay, let's do it. Northwest? Greetings, Outlander. Uh, sure. I know you from somewhere. Northwest. Hmm. How far northwest, I wonder. Okay, let's wait until daytime so we can see a bit better. Eh, one more hour. Here we are. Okay, northwest of here. Here goes a beetle of some sort. Great. Huh. Combat with something else. Cliff racer? No, some sort of bug, I guess. Huh. Oh, there it is. Lovely. Okay. Down and around here. I mean, how how weird and interesting could this group be after the last one? Right. Or I suppose the last one was just <laughs> right. They were they were they were very normal. They were just a regular fucking gang of Viper Blade using dudes. It was it was the stuff around them that was fucked up and strange. There's Kagooty over here. But we're looking for people named after them. Hmm. Maybe up there. Right, this looks like some sort of a makeshift trail path. Oh, look, yeah, there's a torch. Is this Renat? Oh, perfect, it is. combat with something else, too. There's a bit of a trail here. Huh. Oh, no! It's a skeleton whose ass has fallen off. Is it a Khajiit skull, too? God, I... Th yeah, it is. Oh, my God. They fucking hung him. Jesus Christ. Well, I hear someone pissed as hell. Oh, there you are. Hey, who the hell are you? Barcel Ball Mawia. Hey, I've been to Mawia, haven't I? You done cured our guar. I suppose we should thank you. Your guar? You cured the guar. Thank you. We'll eat it later. Oh, I remember. Wait, I can ask about the guar again? Guar? Okay. Alrighty, let's go over here. Up this way. Good. Sure. Yeah, there's the butt. Yeah, I think this is a Khajiit. And you know what else is clever? If this is a... A poor fucking Khajiit that's been hung up and everything by this, like... I presume... <laughs> you know, I presume racist gang, right? You know, that, that makes sense. Their name Kagooty Tusks. It, I, they may not be racist, right? But it sure seems like they are. I mean, in the mystical world of the Elder Scrolls, I feel like you're more liable to encounter racists than not, <laughs> right? Even, even the people who will help you are a bit racist in some way or another. But regardless clever way for them to have the skeleton of a K of a Khajiit but not have to deal with their fucking wild ass Morrowind legs, right? We don't have to have a Khajiit skeleton with its wild fucking like spring into action legs you know? Just have just have everything from the butt down fall off the skeleton genius, honestly Let's do a quick save. Good. And head on in here. 
Enter stealth. Okay. What's going on down this place? Huh. Well, they really doubled up on the scaffolding. It's like I'm in Blight Town. Okay. Whole lot of potions. And shields, it looks like. Okay. Fuck it. Exiting stealth mode. Oh, glass bottles. Huh. Amulet of spell absorption. Ten points for five seconds. Eh. A little bit of money. Soul gem. Cruel viper bolt ring. Amulet of locking. Ancestor's amulet. Some booze. Fortify endurance. I'll take both of those. Some miscellaneous weapons. I'll take the Cerodilic Brandy as well. Pop a quick save. Okay. Let's check over here by way of the mushroom. What the hell? Have I been in here? Hang on. <laughs> Did I kill everybody in here already? Did I already wipe them out? <laughs> Hold up. What the fuck happened here, dude? Did I do this? Okay. Uh, I'm thinking maybe I already killed them all. I don't remember all these shields and shit set up, though. Maybe. Oh, God, but I would remember this. Yeah, they are. They are definitely racist. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. But then how come in that one area I left a little bit of money there? Maybe I didn't see it. Right? Maybe I didn't see this. Yeah, I must have wiped them out. So long ago that their bods... Yeah, look! I wiped it out! Cleared. Runat. Were these the Kaguti tusks? For real? Huh. Okay. <laughs> well, shit. I already did it. Okay, can I claim the bounty if I already killed them previously? Do I get a retroactive reward for having wiped them out? Feel as though I should. I wasn't even paying attention when I asked about the gang again, like, yeah, I already killed them or whatever, if that was an option. I just assumed that I didn't yet. Okay. Hey, what do you think? Want something? Oh. Sorry, Marvir. How about you? Kaguti tusks. Yeah, we we did it! We got it, them! Outlander. Okay. Well, let's recall. Okay. Well, that was easy. Okay. Over here. Good. And then over this way. Sure. And let's head on back down. We'll take the Kaguti Tusks bounty thing off the wall. At the very least. Okay, and then... Oh dear. Where was the bounty lord at? Oh, where was he at? Oh, definitely not in that. Up here? Yeah. Come on, I Hello. All day, you know. I already killed the Kaguti tusks. Oh no. Oh no, it must be bugged out. Now I can never kill them. I, I'll i find them. Better start looking. Yeah, I'm going to have to go to the fucking soul cairn to get them or something. Say your okay. What, stranger? Well, what's next on the list here? Imperial tax notice. 
Well, okay, that's not what we want. Imperial Decree, Heemwan and Elysius. I guess this is our last one. Okay, stuff on taxation. Bounty Notice. By order of Genonia Melitus, Imperial Magistrate of Endothrin, and under the authority of the Ruby Throne, let it be known that the criminals known as Heemwan and Elysius are wanted dead for the crime of murder and suspected plotting of further acts. Reward is 300 septums. Report to Angranak Grodumag at Endothrin's Imperial Commission for more information. Okay, let's do it then. Now, if I do want to join up with the Legion and do Come their on, stuff, how deep do I need to go to get started on Tamriel Rebuilt Legion stuff? Like, if I just get into their ranks, if we, like, next week we go over to Nissus and we just join up real fast, as soon as we're in, are we good? Can we just come out here and start questing? Or do I need to do a few more to get a little bit higher rank to start taking orders? I feel like I should be fine to just get started. Say your right? Needs. To just immediately get in and then go. Because like I said, it very much makes sense to do this throughout a House Lalu character. Okay. Himwan and Elysius. Hear about the bounty. Oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. That's not you. Hear about the bounty. Nasty business, that. A couple of escaped slaves, we believe. But... Don't let that tug at your heartstrings. They cut up one of the overseers as they fled the local landowners. And the local landowners are certain they're planning more attacks. The magistrate is hoping someone steps in before that happens. They escaped from the plantation south of Andothran and are likely still in the area. Ooh, I wonder if we have a different course of action here. Right? Can I help them, maybe? Hmm. I mean, I do... I do like the double standard here, you know, that they are, you know, supposedly the Empire is anti-slavery, but here they are taking a bounty to basically be cat catchers, to like go out and sort of reinforce the institution that is slavery. Okay, I'll do it. Good to hear. All right. Let's see over here. Good. And then, let's head on up this way. Great. I don't know. Maybe we should just do it anyway, right? Maybe we are this kind of asshole. Are we this kind of an asshole? Fuck, I, I think maybe we fucking are. All right. Oh, what did I write in my journal for this, this other stuff? Okay. Agronach Grodumag and the Endothran Imperial Commission has told me about a bounty on the Kaguti Tusks gang. They've been preying on caravans near Arvud, and likely have their hideout in one of the caves nearby. He suggested that I ask the people of Arvud for likely candidates. Agronach Grodumag in the Endothran Imperial Commission has told me about a bounty on Himwan and Elysius. If I want to collect the bounty, Agronach says they're likely near the plantations south of Endothran. Good lord, man. Okay, should we... <laughs> are we gonna go out and do something really fucking horrible, or are we going to... maybe not? <laughs> I don't... I don't know. Okay. Let's see. Over here. Good. Great. Okay. Oh, over here. Should we take care of this beetle that's chasing us down? Or is it already so far away that we've dropped aggro? I think we've... We could just fucking get out here. Okay. There's a pissed off Kagooty, I presume? Oh! It's running away from me! Oh no, it's not. Okay. A diseased Kagooty. I'll eat its skin. Alright. Sure. Yeah, this sort of, like, taking a look at... the morality of legality? As, as it were, not to, not to be a little too whimsical and rhymey with all of it, but, uh... You know. 
of course it should be illegal for someone to like cut up and like assault and or murder i forgot uh what it was another person that's wrong <laughs> but when the context is that you are someone who is a slave <laughs> Well, I feel like it should be allowed, right? Because you were being kept against your will. But of course, this is a place where slavery is legal, right? Thus, if we're enforcing the rule of law, uh, you can't be doing that, right? It's it's not all too dissimilar from other similar... What would you call it? From other... <laughs> yeah, it's not all too dissimilar from the similar. From other sorts of situations where it's like... Um, not nearly quite the same at all but um you know someone's stealing food but they need the food to feed themselves and their like uh family and shit like that right like what is what is the morale does the morality of the situation not outweigh the legality of it right do you not just let this person go right because right like what's the worst that happens to the the shop or the baker or whoever that gets robbed is that they have a bad day, or at worst, they have to close down their business, right? <laughs> if, if there was some freak situation. But on the other hand, it's literally someone starving, right? Okay. Who are you? Look at this I'm fucking asshole. Please go ahead. What's up with you, Lechlaud Roriel? Uh, greetings, Dark Elf. I'm here at the Vathris Plantation trading supplies from Manon. I have a few things left to trade if you have anything you need. Would you happen to be heading to Andodhran? Could you spare some could you spare some time to assist me with a delivery to the dancing cup in town? Oh, I guess I could do that. I will be going back to Andodhran. Okay, delivery to the dancing cup. The proprietor of the dancing cup in Andodhran? Jada? placed an order for five bottles of Cirilli Brothers wine, but I've not found any time in the last month to leave my route. Gosh, the order for five bottles has been open for five for a month? Jesus! I need to find someone to deliver them for me. Would you be able to take these bottles to Jada? This order form should guarantee payment on arrival. Okay, I'll do it. I'm going there anyway. Great! Here are the bottles and the order form. Just take them to Jada at the Dancing Cup in Andothran. This should be a simple delivery and easy money for you. Okay, thanks. Delivery to the Dancing Cup. Jada is a well-organized publican. She should be expecting you. Oh, not now, Bomi. He seems to be getting tired. My apologies, I'll have to handle this. Bomi the Guar? Bomi looks like she wants to say something. Hang on. Is this a... What is... What is going on? Is this a he -guar or a she -guar? Or a both? Okay. Hey. Let's see. Ah, Lyle Schnub, thank you again for agreeing to take that delivery to the Dancing Cup for me. You surely saved my business reputation. Is there anything you are looking to trade for? Uh, what do you have? Is it just booze? Oh, you've got other weird items as well. Wolf's Blood Wine, Cerilli Brothers, Sujama, Restore Health. Fortify Fatigue. Do you have Restore Fatigue in any fashion? No. Okay. You do have a shitload of scrib pie. Maybe, I guess I could buy that as restore fatigue. Right? Maybe I should just buy and hang on to that. Yeah, maybe I should, actually. That's that's not a bad idea. <laughs> right? Maybe I should do that. Sell off a dupe book or so. Okay. Get rid of some of these things. You'll buy them. Good. Get rid of these soul gems clogging up the old sack. All right. Dump those off. Dump 
that off. Anything else? Guess we'll actually sell some of these valuables. Why not? Okay. Sure. Oh, fuck. Vampire dust, right. It's incredibly valuable. Alright, let's see. Who are we looking for again? Who are these? Yeah, Himwan and Elicius. Elicius. Those cold-blooded devils. We've got folks watching the road to make sure they can't slip away in the river. They haven't got past us, I can tell you that for sure. Okay. Hmm. Watching the road, then. Let's see, how about over here? Hmm. Let's have a look. How about... No, I can't ask you about him. What about you, Saku? Has no no. For you. All right. Let's go in here and talk to some of these horrible fuckers. Do you have something yes, to say, stranger? Throw Mondor. Throw Mondor, caretaker of the Vathras household, at your service. Can you tell me about Himwan and Elysius? No, same, same. Okay. What do you have to say about Mundrethi Plantation? Take the road to the south and cross the hills into Anthirin. You should be able to see the plantation from there. Okay. Anything about the river? The Thur is the largest river in Morrowind. It flows out of the canyons of Shirpal or Shapal Shin through Lake Andarum into the inner sea. All right. Hmm. Where's one of Va the Vothras folk? Is there something I okay, can yeah, do you. for you, Arkanda? Let's see. I'm Lassa Vathras, owner of this plantation. How can I help you, Lyle Schnub? Okay, do you know anything of Heme 1 now? Same, same. Latest rumors is lit up, though? Whoa! There's been another mass escape of slaves from the Mundrethi plantation, and they only managed to recapture two of them. If their overseers were more diligent in assessing and caring for their slaves, they wouldn't have to deal with escape attempts all the time. Tell me more about the plantation. The Mundrethi slave market is the largest of its kind on this side of the Thur River. After you reach the Mundrethi plantation, turn east on the road. The slave market is on the riverside. I don't know. I don't know if I have it in me to fucking side with the slavers, honestly. <laughs> I don't think I, I've got it in me to do it. Okay. Let's see. Let's look around here, then. Huh. Maybe inside of one of these buildings? We can find, like, a note or something like that? Or maybe someone will talk to us? No. You want Same something. as usual. Bits of food, cantatas of Vivek. Huh. Summoned Do you have anything to say? No. Question. What about over here? Why do you approach? Hmm. Warm day Shack to three. Your friend. Okay. No, nothing. Huh. Should we ask around with more people? I think maybe we should. Yeah. Okay. The warehouse? Maybe they're still in here. Need I call the Belides guy? Telvor. Oh, you hate me. Maybe I can persuade you up in some fashion? Nope. What if I give you money? There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Uh, actually, we're getting nowhere. Fair enough. Okay. 
There's a top floor to this. We could maybe stand to go check. Okay. I can spare a few moments if you care to talk. Yeah, part of me thinks that they're still here hiding. And they haven't left yet. Okay. Anything going on this way? Well, nothing here. Okay, how about the guard tower? Greetings, Outland. There's a lower level here too. Don't I know you from somewhere? Huh. No. Okay. It could, they could also be in like a nearby Greetings, cave or something uh, like that. Greetings out there. Okay. And this is Valthrus Manor again. Yeah, same, same. May you walk on Back door here. Sands. Okay. How about over this way? That's locked up. Okay. Over here. Hmm. Over this way. Fellas Modril's house. Let's see, do you have anything to talk or to say about them? You do not. We greet you warmly. What do you think of abolitionists? It's the law of Morrowind. Slavery is illegal. The Empire doesn't like it, but the Emperor signed the armistice, and that makes it that made it legal for us to retain our ancient laws and customs. Now there's some abolitionists who say, to hell with the law, slavery is wrong. I'm not saying I disagree in theory, but it's the law. <laughs> Man. It's still good. Alright. Over here. I'm not saying I disagree, but it's the law. I'm allowed to have slaves. I'm allowed to enslave other humans. Well, I guess not humans, but other mortal, sentient, sapient beings. Right? Other people who feel and think and everything just like me. Except I don't really believe that they do. Because I'm a horrible fucking racist. <laughs> okay. Greetings, Outland. Over here. Huh. Yeah, let's have a look around then. There must be like a cave or something not far off. Right? Can we see anything from here? Bunch of ratulons. Huh. Let's see here. Let's ask about them. They're likely still in the area. The two Argonian rogues target the local plantations. They used to just rob and steal, but lately I've heard reports that they've started to murder as many dark elves as they can. I reckon it has something to do with them, with getting even with the slave owners. I myself have always understood greed much better than vengeance, but hey, to each their own. Okay. So saith Orillan Glenick. Okay. Hmm. So they haven't gone onto the road. Right? So wherever they are, it must be on the other side of town. Right? There must be like a cave or something that they're holed up in. What's that right there? Is that something? Huh. No, nothing here, because here's the road again. Alright. Up this way. Here's another, like, trail. Not necessarily a road. Huh. Well, is this place? This is Andodhran again. Okay. Well, maybe this is a road. Okay, over this way. Oh, 
Oh, here's a little something. How about this? No, because there's a skeleton out front. Oh shit, there they are! That's gotta be them! Okay. Oh, and look at this. Maybe this is their place too? Oh, this is like an Ashlander yurt. Huh. Hello. Yes, Outlander. Anmu Shatter. What's up with you? What do you want, Outlander? Oh, I was I was hoping that you would have something to say about them. Doesn't seem like it though. Do you talk about the plantation though? No. Okay. Sure. So where was that body of water at? Over this way. Yeah, okay, let's quick save. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck off! There we are. Okay. Is this a hostile guar or a peace-loving guar? It's peace-loving. Okay. Let's see. Journal has been updated. Heme 1 and Elysius. Well, hello. Another vile dark elf. You'd best leave us alone, or you will face the same fate as Ulvis Heladrin here. Who's Ulvis Heladrin? We snatched him from the Ulver plantation field southwest of here. He had Argonian blood on his hands. We know it, so we killed him. Murdering him was wrong. Well done. Are you sure he was a slave driver? I see. Carry on. <laughs> Are you sure he was a slave driver? I mean, they seem... If anyone would know. There are only two kinds of folks in the plantation fields. Slaves and slave drivers. Very well said. And this one sure as hell wasn't a slave. He was guilty. Murdering him was wrong. All right, well done. I see. Carry on. Oh, what kind of character do I want to be? I really want to say, all right, well done. Huh. But it's true. Our character would would very much be a piece of shit here. Do I want to continue role-playing this character or do I want to do I want to enthuse my own my own feelings about this because this is something that I haven't seen oh what should I do huh oh fuck 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 what should I say oh I can't help it I can't help it how, how could I? I can't side with the fucking slavers. I can't. All right. Well done. Indeed. Now, please excuse us. We shouldn't linger here. Tell me more about you all. Himwan and Elysius. That's us. Can I admire you? I can, but you don't tell me anything else. And what of you? Oh, same, same. Tell me about Ulves. Okay, same again. Oh, I can ask you and you don't want to tell me yet about the two of you. Oh, okay, here, let me give you some money. There we go. That's us. <laughs> that, that's it? Okay. Huh. Alvar Farmhouse Slave Key. All right, sure. Okay. Look, we talked to him. What if I say that I killed them? Can I, can I just say that I killed them? I encountered two Argonians in the wilderness of Rothroran. They are standing next to a corpse. Himwan and Elysius told me that they killed Ulves Heledrin because he was a slave driver. I commended them. Okay. Let's see over here. Over 
this way. Good. Oh, got a little shrine out here. Get some of that. Okay. Well, this isn't the place I was looking for. This is a different plantation. Let's see, where is that other one? Can I go back here and report that I took care of it? Let's have a look. Yes, stranger. All right, up here. Warmly greeted, friend. And then There's much to discuss, much to learn. Killing and murder? Oh, this is about house rules and stuff. Sure. Him one and Elishius. No, I can't lie about it. Of house I can't. I for you? Oh, okay. Sure. Let's go back to Andodrin then. Let's see. Over here. Good. And over this way. Great. And then, let me look for... Hmm, should we go for the dancing cup or should we report back? I could say that I'm just not going to do it, right? I could say that. Let's see here. Over this way. And down here. Good. Over here. Oh, nope. I always lose track of where I'm meant to go here. Alright, here we go. Hello. Let's see. Himwan and Alicius. They should still be around plantation country south of the city. I'm abandoning the bounty. You'll need a harder heart than that to survive in Morrowind, Dark Elf. Okay. Sure. Fair enough. Speak quickly. I've given up on hunting the bounty for Himwan and Elysius. Alright, fair enough. Yeah, you're right. I don't have what it fucking takes. I, <laughs> I don't have what it fucking takes. I can't fucking do it. I can't bring myself to fucking do it. It's too fucking despicable. Alright. Well, I suppose when next we return, we'll go to the Dancing Cup and make this little delivery. Right? We'll do that. However, if you'd like to stick around, we will end this by finally doing a little bit of reading. Right? Let's see. What should we read this time? But... How about... Let's see, check my list here. How about we read... The Fall of the Usurper. There we are. Okay, bit of a medium read. Let me check this off my list. Good. If you'll excuse me, I'm gonna take a quick drink here. Apologies before we get started. The Fall of the Usurper by Palo Ilthri. The people of Dwinin, of Dwinin celebrate Othroctide every fifth of sun's dawn, the date when, according to legend, a man emerged from the wilderness of High Rock and defeated the undead of Castle Whitemore to become the first Baron of Dwinin. Few people believe the legend anymore, but there most certainly was a Baron Othric of Dwinin, who was destined to become one of the true heroes of High Rock, if not all Tamriel. The legend, as most any Dwinin child will tell you, is that years and years ago, archivists have agreed to the year Third Era 253. The people of Dwinin were ruled by a lich, and its army, armies of zombies, ghosts, vampires, and skeletons, Othrock was blessed by gods and given an army of men and animals to destroy the dead. He brought peace and prosperity to the land, growing more powerful as the land improved. 
Years later, he led the tiny barony against the Cameron Usurper and saved all of Tamriel. How much credit the Baron ought to receive for the defeat of the Cameron Usurper has been... debated. But it is an incontestable fact that in the year 3rd Era 267, the Cameron Usurper's relentless move north through High Rock was halted around the area of contemporary Dwinnen. Dwinnen is actually larger than it was in the first Baron's day. It did not, in fact, have a seaport. But the Battle of Fire Waves was a coastal battle. The fact that the battle probably did not occur in Dwinnen does not in, an, in itself belittle the Baron's participation in it. The Cameron Usurper had conquered Hammerfell and Valenwood by means of a large army, which by legend consisted entirely of undead and Daedra, but was mostly composed of Red Guards and Wood Elves. In all probability, the Usurper summoned the Daedra and undead in Arenthia and slowly replaced the original summoned creatures with the armies of his con conquered territories. Most armies of Valenwood have been historically mercenary. Word of the Usurper's conquests reached High Rock in early 266, but preparations to repel the invasion did not begin until early the following year. Historians attribute two factors to High Rock's hesitancy. The primary powers of the Bay were ruled by particularly inept monarchs. Wayrest and Sentinel both had kings in their minority, and Daggerfall was torn by contention between Helena and her cousin Jelaith. The Lord of Reich Grodkeep, now Anticlair, was deathly ill through 266, and finally died at the end of the year. There were, in short, no leaders to unite the province against the usurper. Of the leaders with any influence, at least eight, the eight traitors of legend, made secret allegiances with the usurper to protect their lands. Mind you, um... Uh, Mancar Cameron, right? Or can the the Cameron usurper? I forgot. I forget which one, which Cameron we're talking about. Um, or I forget. I I always mix them up. Was Mancar Cameron the one in Oblivion, or was that, or is Mancar Cameron the more historical one? I think Mancar Cameron is the one present in Oblivion, right? And Cameron the usurper is a different Cameron, but. They are definitely tied together, and the events of Oblivion absolutely um, sort of are a result or a, or a continuation, an attempt to continue the work of Cameron the Usurper, right? Uh, through, I think, Mankar Cameron, right? But this, this also ties back into one of my, um, I don't know, one of my hangups with the main story quest of Oblivion is that we don't get to dwell or talk too much about uh, Mankar Cameron and their, like, what all they're trying to accomplish and everything. You know, it's played very much like, oh, they're just an evil organization. They they want to bring demons about. They want to get rid of the Tamrielic Empire and whatnot. You know, for, for starting your game with one of the highest types of political assassination of wiping, like assassinating the emperor. Uh, there's very little in the way of speaking about politicking, right? Of, of sort of covering in the game itself, really anything to do with Mankar Cameron and uh, why they wanted to go about it other than to bring about great change, right? We don't really hear about uh, too much at all about that. There's very little in the way of it. When there's such great setup for there to be that, for there to be someone who who takes it too far or whatever, for someone to have um, a reason to do something like that, to bring about the Oblivion Crisis and whatnot. Right? Like, I always bring up how a uh, sort of safe they played Oblivion when it came to the the culture clash that was previously talked about that should have existed there in that game, which you get a little bit of it, but it's nowhere near compared to even in Morrowind, right? Or Skyrim, right? Skyrim certainly has a lot of culture clash and like uh, just people being bigoted and stuff. And of course, as we've seen, uh, Morrowind is no stranger to it. 
Um, but there was very little of it in Oblivion. And there wasn't enough, at least for me, and I, I, I feel as if this has been the general sentiment as well, that there's been very little connective, I don't know, connective tissue between like, oh, the state of, there's there's unrest or whatever in in the, in Cyrodiil by virtue of all of these conquered peoples sort of having this melting pot situation being here. And thus, uh, Mankar Cameron or some, or their organization or whatever, right? The Mythic Dawn seek to, I don't know, in some way have a twisted way of liberating these people from uh, whatever the Empire is doing to them in whatever fashion and making it to where, oh, we're, ju we're just going to completely uproot all this shit and take out the Emperor and bring about great change by way of demons. We're going to bring a bunch of demons out here and everything, right? I don't know. I feel like there's there's a pretty good, decent setup for a lot of talk of, like, I don't know. You could, like, Mankar Cameron is very much an ends justify the means sort of character, but it's so scarcely explored there, right? Like, they were afraid to even begin to touch on stuff like that, you know? And Which is why I'm always so sort of... I don't know, maybe more so than than most folks. I'm so forgiving of Skyrim's world building because they kind of get back to that, right? They get back to that with regards to um, the the Thalmor situation, having hangups with Talos, uh, and whether or not you know <laughs> some of them maybe do genuinely have hangups with the worship of Talos and Tiber Septim and whatnot, uh, but others as well are just like. Um, massive fascists, right? <laughs> and that's just their excuse or whatever. But then also at the same time, you have something that is a little bit more earnest with regards to the Stormcloaks, right? Who do have um, sort of this this uh, hang-up about, on the flip side, the Empire thus getting rid of the worship of Talos, of Tiber Septum and whatnot, and that sort of being the Tamerlaic the Tamrielic Empire infringing on their, like, ability to worship a god of their choice or whatever, right? There's, there's so much juicy shit and so much nuance to the factions at play and the, like, ideals. And I, I don't know. I think it's kind of the shame of... Not the shame, but it's a, it is a shame that Oblivion doesn't delve more into it. You know, like, there's so... There was so much room for it to have like so many different factions with different motivations and ideas in that way, and they just didn't really go for it, right? The vast majority of, of it is, like, contained within books wherein you draw connections and, like, make sense of it. There's very little in the way of actual exposition about it, right? There's very little um, situation where, like, what I would love is, you know, you've got this perfect vessel here, Martin Septum, to sort of levy criticism at Uriel Septim the Seventh himself, and like how, how this bastard son got kind of like shirked and thrown away, right? And he kind of makes himself out to be sort of like the perfect solution to this problem, and sort of like, oh, you can sort of bring everybody together, right? And you do have moments where you bring together all of the places, all of the uh, major cities and stuff during the crisis, but there's never really there. There's no like disagreement of ideology there's no situation where like oh this place is kind of in deep shit and kind of doesn't want to rally with you um uh, behind the empire because uriel septum the seventh kind of fucked them over right more so it feels as if the game stops at no end to just jack off uriel septum the seventh right it, it feels almost masturbatory like yeah of course the emperor come on Come on, everybody rallying around the Emperor. Shit like that, right? Or or e even at its most critical, it's like, well, we all need to come together because there's fucking demons coming to kill us all, right? I, I don't know. I feel like there's so much room for it. And um, true enough, you, you, the demons were bad and all of that, but I feel like Skyrim actually handled it pretty fucking good with regards to the dragon threat, right? And making it to where it's like, yeah, well, we're just going to solve the threat ourselves, or... Uh, having to broker the peace, right, um, up there with the Greybeards and all of that, right? I felt like that was, that felt very, 
very much like what I had wanted, right? It felt more quintessentially Elder Scrolls, but granted, my definition of what is quintessentially Elder Scrolls kind of comes, is, is informed by um, what I like about Morrowind, right? Which does have this, right? Like all these various nuanced layers to stuff. Uh, people being hypocritical on different levels of a, of a faction, right? Other people being earnest at, at like lower levels of power. Any, anyway, anyway, sorry. This is always one of my hangups with Oblivion is that it has a bit more of a, I don't know, a naive approach to what would otherwise have been an incredible setup for politics and, and like what the hell is going on in that region. You know, it, that like what better place to have all that shit pop off, right? What better place? Because you would have so many different facets of it rather than just like um, the three-way major faction pull of the Tamrielic Empire, uh, the Stormcloaks, and the Thalmor. You know, sort of that that interaction. You would have a whole lot of vested interests in this one central area where you have to kind of, at, le at, at the very least, you have to bring them all together to fight off uh, the Oblivion Crisis toward the end, right? With the Great Gate and everything. I don't know. Like I said, it's it felt like kind of uh, squandered potential, but maybe, maybe years down the line when we're old as hell, there'll be uh, an Elder Scrolls game set in Cyrodiil again where they kind of make good on that, right? I don't know. I don't know. It it depends. It depends on how they handle the... who whoever the Empire... or whoever the Emperor is, right? Because Uriel Septim the Seventh was kind of like a great setup for it, being uh, who he was and like sort of almost being out of it with regards to all of the dream situation shit, right? Especially toward the end there. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, sorry, that's neither here nor there. Let's continue reading this fucking book, which just, like, completely sent me down a different train track here. The secondary reason for the lethargy, the lethargy of High Rock, had to do with the depth of relations between the province and the Septum Empire. For the first time since the beginning of the dynasty, an emperor ruled Tamriel, who was neither Breton nor had spent any of his childhood in High Rock. The difference between Sepphoris II and his cousin Uriel the Seventh, or Uriel the Fourth, yeah, Uriel the Fourth, uh, who preceded him, was appalling to the people of High Rock. Even mad emperors like Pelagius III revered the Bretons over all other races, and cousins and younger siblings of the emperors have ruled in High Rock since the foundation of the empire. Sepphoris was a Nord, with Skyrim and Morrowin sympathies. The attitude of the common men of High Rock was sympathetic toward the Cameron usurper, as an arch foe of this hated emperor. The Baron and his less legendary allies, the rulers of Icalan, Phrygius, and Cambria, changed this favorable perception. News of the usurper's barbaric treatment of captives and abuse of conquered lands, mostly true, spread rapidly through their territories, and then to other neutral lands. Within a few months, the greatest navy ever combined organized along the high rock edge of the Iliac Bay. Only the navy of Uriel V's in ill-fated invasion of Akavir was comparable. How the combined forces of high rock defeated the endless army of the Cameron Usurper is certainly worthy of a lengthy book in itself, and perhaps it is best left to the public imagination. Certainly, the weather worked against the Usurper, which is reason in itself to attribute divine intervention. Baron Othrock's divine purpose is a central theme to Othrock Tide, after all. And, as the poet Braille Oak wrote, to find the facts, the wisest always look first to the fiction. Oh. Yeah. Very interesting read. Um, like I said... It's, it's amazing how much in books, and granted, you know, I don't think this is... Is this a book that exists in in other Elder Scrolls places? I think it might be The Fall of the Usurper. I feel as if this appeared maybe in Oblivion, for real. But regardless, uh, like I said... Come on, I uh, all day walk with of the Elder Scrolls games that I've played, Oblivion might be sort of the biggest uh, culprit of sort of having a lot of their cool intrigue and everything limited to stuff that's not actually given much exposition whatsoever in the actual game, right? When you're going around in quests and stuff, you know? Which, granted, makes it a lot more approachable and everything, but 
I don't know. I I think I think that's an unnecessary level of of like attempting to make the game more approachable, right? Because a lot of people got into Skyrim and that had a lot of like interesting politicking going around uh, with regards to the Stormcloaks, um you know, the the Tamrielic Empire, the Thalmor, even smaller sub factions like uh Intrigue with the Blades. I love so fucking much how um Right. Yeah, this is a big point of contention for me, actually, is how much Oblivion is down to just fucking jack off the blades. Right. Which, like I always I always bring up. Sure. True enough. It's there's like a horrifying major threat and danger to the land and the blades are kind of well suited to sort of combat it. But at the same time, that that shouldn't preclude you from having room to sort of. Um, criticize the blades and their existence and what they're doing and what they were originally made to do, right? Because fucking A, Morrowind sort of, especially replaying it so many times, Morrowind so often does levy criticisms at the blades, and Lord no, Skyrim certainly did, right? Skyrim certainly levied so many criticisms at the blades, and um, you end up with this weird situation in the sort of I don't know, in the fandom, I guess. I, I don't know, I hate to say it, but you end up with this weird situation wherein uh, people are like, oh, well, I just don't like Delphine and Esbern. And it's usually Delphine, right? Which sometimes I, I wonder if, if, like, the Delphine hate is overdone because there's maybe a little bit of misogyny at play, right? I was just like, there's a little bit of misogyny at play. But uh, regardless, um, you end up people saying, like, well, I love the Blades, but, man, they really fucked them over so bad in Skyrim. They made them so hateable um, with regards to Delphine and Esbern and the whole situation with uh, Parthenax, right? Uh, which is incredibly good. And I would say, no, they did fucking great with that, right? They should be more heavily scrutinized. They are a bit of a fucked up organization, right? You, they were right to make it seem like they're pieces of shit. The Blades have always been and should be opposed as this, like, incredibly powerful, like, CIA-esque, like, you know, thought police, like, political organization that go around doing fucked up kind of shit, you know? The norm should not be how it was in Oblivion. Uh, the way in which they're played in Skyrim and here in Morrowind, right, with regards to Caius and sort of the shit that Caius says about it, right? Because uh, even throughout this very playthrough... Uh, it's very clear the sort of appreciation you can have for the Blades operating in Morrowind and the, them being almost like a a splinter group, right? Sort of going against the grain. And Caius seemingly pays dearly for it, right? Uh, granted, of course, you know, in true Elder Scrolls fashions, there's multiple ways you can read into the fate, the true fate of uh, Caius, you know? But uh, I don't know. I, I feel like that, that's actually a really good thing that they did was making the blades not just out to be purely heroic but there should be nuance in that they are kind of fucked up right I think um I, I don't know I feel like folks are too quick to discredit a lot of how I genuinely I think like Skyrim kind of brought it back to some of the more intriguing politicking that existed in Morrowind right relative to Oblivion you know Anyway, anyway, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the book ended up really sending me down a fucking path. Uh, when next we return, we will... Fuck, what are we going to do? We're going to go to the Dancing Cup. <laughs> and we're going to get involved in some more shit. Maybe we'll go to Nissus and join up. Yeah, let me know, um, if you happen to know, do I need to go, like... Do I need to be a certain level of depth within the Imperial Legion to join up uh, here? Or just as long as I'm in as just even a starter, as long as it says in my faction thing that I'm with the Imperial Legion, am I good to go, right? Am I good to start getting quests here? Because, like I said, there's so much opportunity to, to sort of talk about things, and it seems like the folks who worked on Tamriel Rebuilt knew what the fuck they were doing, right? It seems like a lot of them had great ideas in mind for how how exactly these places and factions should be played um, as like a narrative device or whatever, right? Sort of shit that you can explore. Um, they, they seem to be really fucking clued in uh, in that way. Anyway, anyway, anyway. 
Uh, when next we return, we're at least going to the Dancing Cup. We might go to Vardenfell, too. We might join up real quick. We'll see. It depends. Until next time, please take care of each other. <laughs>